Hello, YouTubers um, and uh, modelers, fellow modelers out there. Although I'm a <clears throat> novice, well, I'm kind of more of an inter intermediate novel, uh, modeler. We're going to be looking at um, Starship Icarus from the Planet of the Apes films, uh, the original 1968 Planet of the Apes films. This is a ship designed by uh, William Kreber and it has a rear end concept that's des that was designed by um, a, a fan a modeler named uh, Jan Rucker, I believe is how you pronounce his name and uh, it's just a concept of uh, what the back end of the ship which never was exposed out of the water in the movie would have been like um, and also there was Jane Franciscus's wreckage all that junk that was behind his ship and it was a uh, it comes pretty close to what what that looked like and uh, the with the skeletal stuff behind the uh, command module which was intact on his ship which probably um, suffered re-entry when, when it was re-entering the uh, atmosphere it suffered uh, probably had some kind of a fire on the engine bay or something like that. Anyway, <clears throat> we're going to look at that. We're going to look at uh... Okay, so I got uh... Alright, so I got this kit on eBay um... <clears throat> and uh... they're still selling them on eBay. There's the guy that I bought it from is selling several of them, so they're they're still available at this, the time of this video's making, which is July the 9th, 2014. They're still uh, I bought my I actually bought mine uh, July the third, the day before the Fourth of July. Um, that's over a Fourth of July present to myself, and uh, and again, this wasn't shown in the movie. In fact, there was a design where this section here would have a rocket system that lo located around here that Kreber himself designed and uh, because of money constraints they didn't do that what they did was they stuck a long bar in the water and then had this thing floating up on top of the water and the only thing you saw you know was that so <clears throat> and then Heston and his crew jumped out of the uh, so let's go ahead and look at this is a 170 second scale um, this one came in a white box with a pretty neat illustration on the front designed by Jan Rucker. It's a resin kit. Um, most fan made models are resin because people, most people can't afford a plastic factory to build plastic models. So resin kits are often <coughs> um, the more expensive kits because these are these aren't produced in a factory and uh, they're more expensive to uh, mold and then produce that then uh, they would be in a factory so okay now this I've already opened the package it doesn't this isn't the way it was presented when I got it in the mail but anyway I've got the the ventral piece uh, sort of like a filleted fish. I got the ventral piece lying right side up with the interior showing. It's got interior detail and I've got the dorsal piece lying straight down. So let's pull this out. I want to show you what, the, what you're getting here when you get this kit. It was um, $130 but these fan base models you're going to be paying a lot for them and they are worth it trust me. And if you do them right they'll be probably worth several times that much and I would like <clears throat> I'm not like an expert but I've got some skill I I've had experience building skill level two and three models I've built several skill level twos and I built uh, at least one skill level three and probably another that seemed like a skill level three this is probably more like a skill level three maybe even a skill level four it's a uh, intermediate to expert I'm gonna get this out of here Okay, so what you're getting is a um, cutaway section that you put together, ventral to dorsal, or dorsal to ventral. You, and, and it, so it comes with a detailed interior, which um, 
they tell you in the directions. You get some pretty good directions here. Pretty concise, a lot more concise than some of the AT and T and whatnot kids that I've done. That has a good painting instructions. They tell you exactly where to place the decals in play in these obscure places and so forth. And you get some window panes to go over the windows here, and it looks pretty damn good to me. I was really impressed with it when I pulled it out of the box for the first time. It looks, I mean, pretty exactly like the real ship in the front. Plus, the back is well designed. This was um, conceived. Someone used their imagination to build the back of it. There's a hyperdrive looking thing. Those are probably the hyperdrive ion drive vents. I'm guessing I'm not a scientist or anything, but that would be what I would guess they would be. Because it, it does go faster than light. <clears throat> And then it's got some maneuvering jets on the dorsal. Pretty cool looking windows. The uh, skid board, which I do not recommend sanding because you'll ruin that. That detail is really good. It's I mean, that's just looks like a Hollywood. When you paint that, that kind of, kind of a dark green color, it's going to look like a bloody Hollywood set. I mean, it's going to look that good. And I would like to do some weathering on this as well. Some streaking and whatnot. Make it look like it's going to re-entry burns. It's going to be coming in on his tail before it does a nose dive. Okay, now let's look at the oh, the uh, ventral underside. And it'll have a uh, the USA stripes here. For, I love those stripes on the ship. It's signature of that ship. That's the one thing that struck me. It was striking on the original ship. It was painted this bright white and had those things on there. And then these aren't in the movie, but it has these cool decals that go on the air brakes that are uh, shown there's an indention shown there I guess someone if more experienced than I would could cut those out and make joints for them to make them go back and forth to slow the ship's ascent or even put retro rockets in there but I'm not going to do that I'm going to do it this is the first one I've gotten of these resin kits and it's the first Starship Victory, so I'm going to do it pretty much like the directions say to do it. Except I'll probably do a little weathering. I haven't really decided yet. <clears throat> okay, there's the interior. Like when the camera cuts away, when uh, Heston does his, and that completes my report before we reach touchdown, the camera's zooming in too far on it. That's the hibernation chamber, and then we go to the command section, and there's Heston C over there on the right. Um, if you chose, it's got some detail back here, and now if you glue the ship shut, you're not going to see that, but I'm going to leave mine open and may I maybe put some magnets or something on here to remove this when I want to look at the interior. Otherwise, the only way you're going to see the interior is through the uh, transparencies here, and you, but, but, but see the way they're shaped, they kind of go back like bird's eyes. Then, oh, oops. then uh, you know you you will be able to see the interior even when you paint it and get get some kind of an anti light coat over it to block the light out. You'll still be able to see it because of the way that the eyes the uh, windshields are designed. Um, I love this back end. It's totally badass. You could even do that for if you wanted to make a different kind of a ship completely, like some ship science fiction so whatnot you could actually redesign this and kit bash it oh, well, I'm not going to do that with my first one though <clears throat> and then I would recommend painting the interior tan you can put the original ship had this kind of an eggshell looking stuff in here that uh, when it and then it, they had like a I don't know what you call it an eggshell uh, that's probably what they used and I would recommend just painting it beige, or you could probably get some kind of a cellophane or something. I really don't know. And then and I'm going to paint that Chevy engine red, the escape hatch. That's a good color that would replicate that pretty well. There's the engine bay. You'll never see that in the movie, although Francisca's ship did have that exposed in his ship. That's what you would see of his ship. This part here, there's a bit of steel, twisted steel that was white up to this point, and it burned up over here. And then there was like a kind of a rocket shroud back here to house the 
one of the main thrust arrays and supposedly it also had a second and third thrust array. It could have, I mean, who knows? It, I mean, the, this is depicted that it does, and I'd like to do that some other future project to try to detail in there, maybe. Um, <clears throat> okay, let's see what else. Okay. Uh, the flight deck is pretty cool looking. And when you put the chairs in there, and there's a piece that goes over this, it'll look really nice. I've already test fitted these pieces. I love to test fit things before I glue them in permanently. And then it's got the, the signature canards, I believe they're called canards. The, uh, I believe they're attitude adjusters. The, 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 you, there's rockets that go on the end of those. And the American flags go on the lower and upper canards. Um, let's see what else is there? There's a uh, sticker sheet. And these are the accessories, the parts that go in there and make really intricate details. Um, it looks like it would be relatively simple to put together, but you know, it, it may be harder than it looks. I really don't know. I haven't put these kits together yet. It says it's for intermediate to expert. Well, I consider myself an intermediate model, or that means that I've done probably at least one third level kit, and I actually did it in one night, actually. So, yeah, I could be a, a considered an intermediate modeler. I was in a hurry to get this Christmas present out for my dad, which was a, a 63 Studebaker Abbondi, and it was a skill level 3 with the doors and my steering wheel, or the turning wheel, front wheels. I got it done Christmas Eve night. So, yes, I could consider myself at least mid intermediate. Okay, if I can get this camera not to go blurry on me. Okay, so you have the uh, uh, command uh, console here. This would fit right there. And it looks pretty good. Even before it's painted, you can see that you're going to get a pretty good idea of how it's going to look. And uh, you'll get some stickers here. There's a tape recorder there. Where Charlton Heston does the, uh, or Taylor brother does the, and now I complete my report. You get a pretty cool main thrust array of three rockets, and you get four uh, chairs. You know, for one with a high back, obviously that would be the Colonel chair. I'm guessing, unless that's just Flash. I think I'll leave it. I don't know if it's in the movie or not, but that could be a Taylor Colonel Taylor's chair, the Colonel has the headrest and then uh, of course there would be stirred land in and dodge and I always like to uh, play around with things before I actually assemble them and pre-assemble them and see what they might look like assembled before I paint it and before I glue it and everything okay and now it looks here's what it looks like with all the assemblages uh, the camera will quit doing that Put it in the light. Whoa, that's too much light. So there's a, and so then when the camera goes away, it's like, and now it completes my report before I reach touchdown. The ship's computers are in full automatic in the hands of the computer, and then and then you go cut away to the side. There's Colonel Taylor's chair while he's making the speech with his microphone. I suppose you could get some filament or something and put one in there. I don't know. <clears throat> Again, that's some time. Some extra effort that I'm just not going to take on my first one, my first Icarus. It looks really good with the uh, the uh, control deck put in there, the chairs in there, and then when you put this on, I'll if the chairs don't fall out, I'll show you. Now you you might want to handle resin carefully. I'm not really sure exactly what resin is, although it feels like plastic. It feels like those mold animals you they make you get at the zoo but you know it's it's supposed to be really brittle so you don't want to drop things you just potentially could crack I always thought it was ceramic my mother has Santa Claus is made out of resin and I always thought that's ceramic how could they make a, a spaceship out of a you know something they make statues out of but this is really smoothed over so it's more like a machine hers are organic or more organic because it's you know, they're Santa Clauses. This is kind of a well, 
semi flesh tone. Hers was white. I'm not really sure why that is either. Um, but well, I think the chairs fell out. But again, even when you paint it white and and put uh, some kind of a primer on there to block the light out, you'll still be able to see in there because of the way the windows are shaped and they both go back. You can there's enough light that goes in there. You can see the flight deck. You won't be able to see behind that. You won't be able to see the escape hatch, but you'll be able to see um, what was mainly intended to be seen, um, you know, by the uh, maker of the ship, which is all those seats, the flying decks, the tape recorders, and everything in this bay here, with these th four chairs with the four astronauts. I suppose you could also put transparencies back here and make hibernation tanks, or you could even go all out and make characters for these things that fit in these chairs or these tanks. Um, pretty hard to do, I think. You'd have to do some major whittling with plastic or wood or something, I don't know. Okay, let's see. I'm gonna... That's pretty what the main cast away looks like. It looks pretty cool, actually. Okay, we're looking at the ship upside down. I have put in the, uh, the main thrust away. This engine right here was seen in the Franciscus ship in wreck with a bunch of junk going to here, twisted metal, and then the ship being more intact from that point. This is what Jan Rukil, excuse me, I say Rukil a lot, sorry about that, because um, uh, there's a character from Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic that came up late, whose name is Rukil, <laughs> from the Promised Land, ironically, Promised Land ship for Escape to the Planet of the Apes. Anyway, back on topic. <clears throat> um, so the thrust array, and then he he put three engines in there. It looks pretty cool. It looks like it's big enough to power this big giant ship and uh, allow it to slow ascent in the atmosphere and again take off. This is a ship that if it's working right, which it never does in all of the films it's been in, but if it does work right, it will be able to, after it lands, be able to take off again because of the... So these would be the takeoff and land engines. Then it has a hyperdrive back here. These are the maneuvering uh, thrusters. One here, and it goes there too. On the door, the, excuse me, the ventral, there's also dorsal maneuvering thrusters. 